Hi, my name is Wilman Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I'm so excited to be speaking with Phoenix's latest celebrity artist, a Renaissance man of a musician, Mr. Ross Crowder. Ross is a bass player, tuba player, and composer based right here in New York City. And he's equally at home in the pits of Broadway playing music, or as the conductor of his very own jazz orchestra, aptly titled the Ross Crowder Jazz Orchestra, which has some of the top musicians, not only here in New York, but across the country. Before the pandemic, Ross was seen on the national tours of the hit Broadway shows, Bandstand and Fame. And I cannot wait for you to hear a sneak peek at Ross Crowder. Well, hello, Ross. How are you? Very well, Will. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's been a few years since I've seen you. Sure has. But you've been very busy, my friend. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've been uh, on the road, really, for a, quite a bit of time. Um, most recently, I was out with the first national tour of a show called Bandstand. Yes, really I know it very well, and I know that you were on that, and I knew quite a few people who were on that with you as well. And what the audience just got to see is not so much you in solo action as you would be seen in a Broadway pit situation, but your very own jazz orchestra aptly titled the Ross Crowder Jazz Orchestra. Yeah, um, thanks for that. Um, I, I've had that band since I was 17. Um, wow, how did that idea come about for you, Ross? Well, I've been playing jazz since I was 10. And um, ever since I was 14 or so, I started going every Monday night to hear the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra at the Village Vanguard. Wow. Um, and I was inspired to start writing for big band. And the only way you get your charts played when you start writing for big band is to start your own band. So I just did that. You know, Ross, when I met you while I was performing with my brother, Anthony, uh, you played bass for us. I'll never forget though our conversation in the dressing room. I feel like we had such an old school conversation, two old souls talking about the jazz cats. I believe at the time I was working on a production that I was conceiving and directing around Cy Coleman. And we were talking about Cy and yeah. I even think, remember, I even remember you mentioning something about you going to see shows at the Vanguard. And I just love that like someone our age was talking about it too. Was, it, was this music that you were listening to as a kid in your home? Yeah, I mean, some of it was. Um, yeah, I, I grew up on a lot of, uh, well, on a very widely varied um, spectrum of music. Um, grew up on a lot of James Taylor, actually. Oh, wow. So, but James Taylor is really unique in that he uses jazz musicians and the jazz harmonic vocabulary in the sort of singer-songwriter style. So that kind of was the gateway for me into the the heavy jazz. But I also had great teachers growing up who exposed me to all the music of the jazz greats. Absolutely. So look at here you are, you're 14, you're hanging at the Village Vanguard like you're some jazz cat in the 40s. You're learning from the best. You play multiple instruments. You have your own jazz orchestra. And on top of that, you are a composer. Explain to me a little bit about your composing. Um, well. <laughs> I do a lot of composing. I also do a lot of arranging and orchestrating. Um, I, I tend to even do more of that. Um, but when I compose, I'm not the kind who can just sit at a piece of manuscript paper or at a computer and just come up with something. I have to have something hit me. Mm. Whether, whether that's in the middle of the night or as I'm getting up in the morning or at any point during the day, I have to have a piece of manuscript and a pencil near me at any given time mm. just in case something comes to me. I mean, the most recent tune I wrote just a few weeks ago, I wrote right as I was waking up in the morning, um, just because I, I heard it in my head. And so I woke up and I went over to my, my drafting table where I have my manuscript and my pencils and I just wrote it down. I love it. Well, I can only imagine too that same kind of spark of inspiration that you get when you want to write a song, I'm sure also allows you 
to compose the orchestration or arrangement around a song um, once you get it in front of you. Explain to me a little bit about how that process works. Well, I, I'm very old fashioned in that I do a lot of my writing by hand still. That's why I love you, Ross. Um, so I, I, I uh, yeah, I have my big, huge pads of score paper. Um, they, they're really expensive and they're hard to get, but they, uh, it's worth it for me because it's just the thought process of putting it onto paper to me is a lot more organic than plugging it into a computer and hearing it back. Mm. Um, you know, I love it. It's almost like a flow, like boom, hand, paper. Exactly. And, you know, I have certain pencils I use, I have certain erasers I use. Like the greats, Ross. So that doesn't surprise me. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I have, um, I have a pretty specific process when I'm arranging something that I will, I usually have some bit of an idea for an introduction and then I'll have, you know, in a big band chart, you often have a saxophone solely. So sometimes I'll have that in my head and I'll know I want to write that somewhere and place it into the chart later. So I'll do that or whatever it ends up being. I just, uh, the arranging process is very cool when you're taking either your own music or someone else's and kind of expanding it. Um, mm. You know, I, I've, with my big band, we do a lot of more standard tunes as well as original stuff. But um, when, when I'm arranging the standards, I'm trying to think of what can I do with this to make it my unique spin on it? Mm. You know, That's other, times, other times I'm tasked if I'm, if I'm writing for an artist or something, I, if I'm tasked with, well, sometimes I'm tasked with more of a transcription and reduction than I am a true arrangement. Mm. And so I do a lot of that too uh, for like headliners who work on cruise ships and stuff. Um, but I prefer whenever I can to write a totally original arrangement. It's just, it feels more me, you know, unless. Well, that doesn't surprise me again too, because you know, your idols are once in a generation, authentic musician, composer, arranger, orchestrators. And you know, Ross, what I'm so excited to is uh, you coming on board Phoenix, because I know that the platform is not only going to be able to connect you with people around the globe in terms of you as a musician, but also you as an arranger, orchestrator, composer, and a collaborator. And if you've got anyone who can, you know, vouch for you, you're, you're talking to them. And I'm so grateful that you were able to speak with me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Ross. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.